Niagara head coach Dave Burkholder right there joining us now on Purple Eagles Weekly here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. And I mentioned going to the break, you've seen entirely too much of me. 11 game road trip. So uh, I'll, I'll get out of your hair after, after tonight. <laughs> But uh, what, what was it like? 11 games, longest in, in program history. I mean, a lot of trips, a lot of different places. What did you find out about your team after 11 games on the road? Well, it was grueling. It really was. And, you know, when I looked at it on paper in the summer, you know, um, I saw a Christmas break, which was two weeks, which we really needed. And it really it split the, the, the trip in half. But, um, you know, that's, that's a segment that could ruin your season. You know, it was, it was that tough. I mean, traveling to... Connecticut and back and then you know the next week getting on the same bus and going to Boston and back and and then Pittsburgh so um, what did I learn about our team I, I love our team um, you know we came out of that uh, league segment of eight games with a winning record and and I really don't know if anyone else on our side on our pod could do what we did and, and be over 500 so so we're pleased you know our overall records not where we want it to be but uh, we've played 13 league games and only had three at home. So, uh, you know, this, I, gu I guess we'll talk in eight weeks or so and see where we're at. And you've had a lot of close games as well. One goal losses, one goal wins, a lot of ties, more than any single season in, in team history as well. So you're probably still finding out a lot about your team. Those ties, those one goal games turn a little bit as your young team. It's a very young team. Mm -hmm. So as you look forward to the second portion of the season where you've got 10 games out of 14 at home, what do you see for this team? Well, I, I think the sky's the limit. I, I, I truly believe, and I think our guys are starting to believe it. I think that six-game segment right before Christmas, all on the road, and we didn't lose. We had three wins and three ties. I think the guys just started to feel some confidence. And, and uh, you know, I think we have a championship team in that locker room. And, uh, you know, to be at home for pretty much the rest of the semester, uh, you know, and, and we have a very good, we're very proud of our record at home. We need to use that to our advantage. If we take care of business at home, I think we'll, we'll be in it for a regular season championship and then look forward to the playoffs. So. Well, last season you graduate, Paul, uh, Paul Zanette and Brian Hachick, two of the best players in program history. And you probably have to wonder what's going to happen in the room. Those are two leaders that are leaving, and guys have to step up. So has it happened as you thought it would, and, and who have been those players? It has. We, uh, we named Jason Beatty, who's a junior defenseman. We named him one of our captains. Uh, Robert Martini is a senior. Um, kind of a role player in and out of the lineup, but, but just uh, lives his life the right way, um, you know, the way we demand as a Niagara hockey player. We made him a captain. And then Giancarlo Iorio, who's our leading returning scorer. Um, so those three guys are, are a really good core of, of leaders for us. But, you know, overall, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a group of dedicated men that, uh, you know, are in it for the right reasons, and, and we've been successful because of that. I like, I like Martini's story because he's not the flashy player. You know, he's not the leading scorer. He'll play back on D for you. He'll play forward for you. And that he was one of the captains. It was one thing I really liked this season coming in, seeing that he, that he was given that. It had to mean the world to him, and I think it probably sets a great example for the room. It does. And, you know, he's, he's been a healthy scratch uh, a few times over his career and, and hasn't said boo. And, you know, he's a coach's dream. And he's been voted the most dedicated player the last two seasons by his teammates. Uh, and that says a lot. So he's, uh, he's just a great kid. I mean, he's a 4 0 he's a straight A student, and, and he's, you know, he's dedicated in all aspects of his life, wants to be a pro player. I think he has some potential there. But again, any role we give him, he'll accept and, and uh, put everything he has into it. And he's a character, too, as well. He's so a good guy to know. <laughs> How about Canisius coming up, RIT, a couple matchups coming up inside the conference? These are matchups that, you know, they would have been rivalries before, but now it's been amped up even more so. The Canisius games have to be ones that the players really look forward to. Well, it's been just changing leagues. For us to get into Atlantic hockey has been really good for our program. I think it's given us a, a really good uh, uh, kick, so it's been great. And yeah, you mentioned the Canisius games. They were always big. It's big anytime Niagara and Canisius play in any sport. But now that there's league points up for grabs, th those games have, have gone to a whole different level, uh, passion, spirit, and energy-wise. And last year, it's at the hands of Canisius that the season ends. So circled on the calendar by everybody on the team. Yeah, we're trying not to. We're trying to trying to erase those memories. But they were, uh, you know, they were a senior-laden team. They were the oldest team in the country, and uh, we weren't playing our best hockey at that time. But uh, it's a different season, and uh, you know, I, I look forward to those games. And yeah, there's there's a little bit that we owe them. Yes. You have a bunch of losses to really good teams and really close losses. If you look at the national rankings, you've played a lot of those teams. Michigan, Union, Colgate, Minnesota. 
And I know you do this every year. So do you see the results when you, when you see your players that that top-tier talent, that top-tier competition makes them better players later in the year? I, I believe that, and that's been our philosophy since we started the Niagara Hockey. And, and I think that's, that's why our administration started men's hockey. And, and, and I think our players deserve it. Our fans deserve it. We want to test ourselves against the best in the country. And, you know, for our young team to have the, the three experiences, arguably the three best buildings in college hockey are Cornell, Michigan, and Minnesota, we do it all in the first semester. So, <laughs> you know, they're, they're tough losses, um, but they were all close games. We, you know, I thought we showed really well. They're losses, but I think those experiences are going to make us better come playoff time. Those road environments, good, and now a chance to get a good environment back at home at Dwyer Arena, 10 of the next 14, and this weekend, Army. Big games inside the conference. Oh, huge, and it's, it's just going to be so nice not to jump on a bus and just, you know, kids can, you know, get back into the routine of playing at the Dwyer, and it's, uh, you know, it's been a, been a couple of months since we've been at home, so we're excited to get there. All right, Berkey, well, best of luck in the second half of the season. We'll see you around campus for a change. <laughs> it's right. nice. Dave Burkholder, head coach of the men's hockey team.